I had written an article on the greenhouse effect. It was a year-end article. They wanted me to pick out the most important scientific event of 1988. But I thought that the most interesting scientific event of 1988 was the way everyone started speaking about the greenhouse effect because there was a hot summer and a drought when I had been talking about the greenhouse effect for 20 years at least. Uh, and there were other people who talked about it before I did. I mean, I didn't invent it. So I explained what was meant by the greenhouse effect. And I also explained that not only were we constantly pumping carbon dioxide into the atmosphere because we're burning fossil fuels, coal and oil and gas, so that the content of the atmosphere, as far as carbon dioxide is concerned, has been going up steadily, not very rapidly, ever since 1900. And it's continuing to do so. The amount of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere now is 50% higher than it was in 1900. It's still, it's still only a little over 300, 0.035%. It's enough to trap the infrared waves that Earth reflects into space and to raise the temperature of the Earth slightly. The temperature will keep on going up. And not only are we piling in more and more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, but we are chopping down the forests of the Earth at a great rate. And the forests themselves are the most efficient consumers of carbon dioxide that there are on Earth. And if we replace them with desert, which is most likely, it won't absorb the carbon dioxide at all. So that, in a sense, we are contributing to the greenhouse effect in two ways. By, by pushing the output of carbon dioxide and inhibiting the input, so to speak. You can go through the entire list of dangers that face humanity. And the very point of the whole thing is that they face humanity and not any one section of it. And in order to solve these problems, in order to make sure not just that our progeny will be prosperous, but that our progeny will live to go to the solution of these problems, we cannot expect that this will be done by individual nations. The only way is by a human solution, a totally human solution, an international solution, a cooperative solution. It is important that the world get together and be sufficiently a unit to face the problems which attack us as a unit. The problems with the ocean, with the atmosphere, with the soil, with the population, with pollution, with anything you want to aim. Do not distinguish among us. How then can we distinguish among ourselves? There must be some way of getting together and of deciding not that the United States will tell Brazil what to do, not what Brazil will tell the United States what to do, but what the people of the earth will tell themselves they must do. We have no difficulty applying this principle to the United States itself. We don't say that New York hasn't got the right to tell California what to do, that California hasn't got the right to tell Florida what to do, when it comes to international trade, when it comes to any facet of national life that rises above the parochial needs of cities and states, the federal government tells all the states what to do, and the federal government can do it because it consists of representatives from all the states. Well, what we need is some sort of federal world government and the only problem is how we manage to do that.